Let's understand the true ending of No Players Online. But let's start where we were supposed to start. The No Players Online trailer tape. A video that most of the people who saw No Players Online have not seen. It starts the same way the game starts, but then it switches to some old Nintendo game ad, and then there's a glitch, and it continues. And then at some point you are in the game, in the trailer. The trailer sets a very nice mood for this game experience, which we yet have to start actually playing. And then it starts with some 80s horror film trailers. Now this is key, because seeing this trailer makes it much easier to understand where some quotes from inside the game come from. Hell of a large hand, for example. And more game trailers. And some in-game stuff, even the gun is used. The trailer is 1 minute and 43 seconds. <laughs> the climax of the game has been not put in the trailer. Oh, it has! Oh, wow! Excellent. Oh, I love this. No players online in this old font. And then they have their actual credits in there. Pretty cool stuff. So take a look at this. It says footage used and then it links to just some glitch video. And the next link is to horror movie trailers of the 1980s. I think that's how the developer found inspiration. He just googled horror trailers and used what looked good the first few seconds. The second part of the video is not even being used. And then there's uh, some video game trailers. They just searched that and used what they found. With that knowledge, now let's start playing No Players Online. It starts with a Unity logo. Unity non-pro version is used. And then they use this amazing effect where an image is drawn on top of the desktop. I will love this. It's fantastic. All right, it starts with a video that boots some kind of uh, video tape deck, apparently. There are some very nice sounds of a mechanical device starting to spin, and then the operating system boots. MS Boss Operating System 1.034-02. Loading cartridge, capture the flag project beta 0.23, and a very nice retro look with white text on blue background. And now we can browse some servers, but nothing really matters except offline servers you cannot join. And which other server you join doesn't matter. So now we are entering the game. No players online. Here we are. You might have noticed I have enhanced the graphics for your viewing pleasure. So what do we have here? We have a blue sky. We have birds chirping in the background. We have wind blowing and closed gates. So first things first, we're just gonna rush to the enemy base, because this is a capture of a flag game. It's a rather symmetric map. We're just gonna move towards the other side of the map. And here we're gonna take the flag. Now let's pay attention what happens now. Everything gets darker. So far the birds are still chirping, but it got much darker and creepier. And now we have this, some music playing. Now this piece of equipment, it actually makes a difference whether you shoot it or not. I'm gonna show you later. Okay, so let's continue and walk to the, you know, our base so we can actually capture the flag. And here we can see a shadowy figure in the distance. But if we come closer, it just disappears. So let's finish this and get the first score. Here's the blue flag. What happens if we capture it? We hear a sound. That's all for now. Now pay attention. The map changes. in slight and creepy ways. For now, there's only this red monster, as the developer calls it. It slows down our movement. We can approach it, no problem, but we are slowed down for this. There's a creepy sound going around it. Some kind of quar. But once we step into the room, 
it just disappears and never appears again. This is the only appearance of this entity. Well, let's take the red flag once more and see what happens now. The voice says new challenger and someone joined the game. The gates open. However, you cannot walk through here. You can never walk through here. The same happened to the gates on the other side of the map. And there also you cannot walk through. Let's pay attention to the map. There was another shadowy creature over here. But yet again it disappeared immediately. Alright, let's uh, keep moving. Here we are. The gates are open here as well. But as you can see, no, you cannot go through. Now look at this. We can actually try to shoot at this. But it's not really possible. We don't get any ammo even if we reload. Oh, there was another shadowy creature over here. Well, we're gonna just go to the other side of the map now again and capture the flag for the final time. Well, we're gonna take it and then try to capture. So what happens now? We have a flag. The interesting part about the previous capture was that we could just look the other way. However, this is not gonna be possible this time. For when you try, the following happens. Behind you, the text says. And you cannot escape. You have to turn around. Nothing else happens otherwise. And I can actually move around very slowly. But this creature just approaches. And I don't actually get any ammo from reloading. I cannot shoot it. Very nice, creepy creature. Alright. So John Dev has joined a spectator. Stop what you are doing, he says. Do not move another step. Whatever you do, do not deliver that flag. How did you even get access to this game? Can you hear me? So there's somebody trying to communicate to us. If you can read this, press Y to chat and say something. Pressing Y does nothing, but we have to press Y for this to progress. We have to try. Wait, never mind. I don't think you have chat permission on that this server, indeed. Just shoot twice if you can read this. Now this is a bit silly because shooting twice means to me. But in fact, it doesn't work that way. You have to actually empty your mag, reload, empty it again, and then he recognizes that as shooting twice. Okay, so you can read this, they say. So let me explain, John Dev writes. Let's listen. If you deliver that last flag, the servers will shut down. I absolutely cannot let that happen, they write. I've been working on this project for more than 11 years. I can't let you jeopardize all of my work. This may look like a simple FPS game to you. Sure does. But this game has the power to raise the dead. At least that's what it is supposed to do. We could we could capture that flag. We could. We actually can. It's still a work in progress, as you can probably tell. I'm making this so I can see my wife again. But she seems to be stuck in a sort of limbo. You probably already met her. If we approach the flag... John Dev begs we stop. So he says, no, no, thank you. So where was I? You probably already met her. She might come over a bit aggressive, but she's just scared and confused. I've been able to keep her relatively calm by playing her favorite music. If you deliver that last flag, her soul will be set free. But I know I can save her and bring her back. Please press escape and shut down the game. Please. No, 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 he says when we approach the flag. And then we'll leave it, and he doesn't say it. Please don't, he says. Stop what you're doing. Etc, etc. Stop what you're doing. I think it's just randomized free phrases. So now we have a choice to either deliver a flag, or not. And then just press escape. If we do deliver the flag, the game ends. Supposedly the soul of a dead wife is set free, which might be a good ending. And when we come back to the server list, well, it will be empty. Let's try. This is not the end yet. Kick from server, reason, connection to host lost. We can restore this using the Konami code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. So we can continue playing. This first secret is conveyed in a news post by the developer on the game page. 
I believe that's the only place you can actually get this info. Hint, a combination of keys that sounds like Konami, a way to reset your save file if you wanted to see other endings. So this what we just saw was actually an ending that is not the true ending. So with up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, I can actually reset the servers and restart the game. This was one of the endings, but not the true ending, and we want to see the true ending. So I'm gonna join this server, and I'm gonna continue where we left off. We're gonna just keep getting the flag. Here we have some geometry, nothing else going on. And let's just keep going and get that first flag. So again, the sky turns dark, and this creature starts appearing. But let me show you one difference that it makes. If we shoot this record player... Well, first of all, the music becomes darker. The music goes away and instead we have some kind of drone or atmosphere in the background. This does not happen if we don't shoot it. Very nice creepy atmosphere, I have to say. Very nice. This creature is still here. And now let's just finish this and see what happens if we do it the proper way. Again we see the red uh, light monster here. And we just keep going. Soon there will be the dead wife appearing behind us and we cannot really avoid it. Okay, this is the final flag, so here we're gonna have to turn around, can't do anything about it. And now we get the same text, but let's look at the difference that results from us shooting the record player. Alright, here we go. She might come over a bit aggressive, but she's just scared and confused. Can you blame her? You destroyed the record player with your favorite music. I used that music to keep her calm. Now these two lines differ from what we see otherwise. Here's what we saw earlier. I've been able to keep her relatively calm by playing her favorite music. That's the only line. So we could set her free, which is kind of a good ending, but it's not the true ending, so we're gonna do what he asks. We're gonna press escape. And here we are on the server list. We are kicked, but the servers are still online. So let's join the server again and see what happens now. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, nothing much happens. We have to play the game again. We have to continue getting the flag and bringing it back. Just good old CTF solo play. So it's turning dark again and the creature appears again. And I'm delivering the flag again and I'm getting the red monster sighting again and so on and so on. All right, the gates open again. And now let me show you the little difference that you can achieve. You can just not turn around here. And the dead wife will approach you from the back. You can hear her, but you don't have to see her. You can avoid that sighting if you want. Now let's see what happens if we take the last flag and try to deliver it. Now, do you think this is gonna change? The encounter in the hallway? Nah, it's staying the same. We can still move around, we can still try to reload. To no avail. And now John Dev says, why are you here again? Please, just leave us alone. Look at the sky, look at the sky. John Dev has joined the game, and as you can see, this eye just appeared. Now what we can do is, we can shoot that eye. Let me go closer. Here we are. Look close. Did you see the bullet hole? I only now realized there is one. Anyways, we have a piece of paper and a pencil, and the pencil draws... lines. These have meaning. Up. Another up arrow. And another up arrow. And what happens now? A down arrow. And another down arrow. And now the pencil draws a shape of a keyboard key. A shape that is not extremely commonly used. It's an enter key or a return key. Keyboard designs have changed in the past. But this is the classic enter key with that interesting arrow that points down and then to the left. So now we are kicked, and we have a little eye icon at the top. Now let me show you what we can do with the code we just saw. I just want to move a game screen away so we can see the desktop as well. Now it was up, 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 down, down, enter. Did you see that? This file just appeared. This file contains this. 
warning, enable tracking, re-establishing connection to server, underscore deleting, srh.ch, resetting progress, dump end, exception, dead end, 25467. 25467 will be relevant. Now the next steps happen outside of a game. You have to actually follow the game on itch to see these things. First, there is a complete save file. This is a teaser. There is a new file, 100% save file.save, sav, and you can just download it over here. But the interesting part is that if we rename this to PNG, it's actually just a PNG file, and it has this painting inside, and it has this date, 11.15.9. And on that date, there was a new update. Here we are, 19.11.15. See, this is just a standard update text, but the relevant part here is the email address. If you email this address, you get this reply, an automatic reply. Due to personal grievances, I'm out of office, regards, and two website links. Now this website link is wrong and dead. It has been taken by some domain hogger by now, but there never was anything. Wayback Machine knows nothing of this URL. But this personal website, that sure works. There is the I game, and you recognize the painting we just saw. You recognize the lantern from it. And this game we can download. It's just an exe file. Chrome warns against it, of course. And if we play I, well, you will see. Made with Unity again. And this is what we see in this game. We see a house. We see a beautiful painting, like te textures on everything. They are gorgeous. We have a leash holder on, in our hand. It just floats in front of us. And there is a leash, an inconceivable leash of infinity to some dog that we never see. I'm going to tell you that right now. We hear some dog panting and some piano music and we just go we cannot run by the way we just keep going towards wherever the leash guides us we keep hearing the dog as if it was next to us and uh, i for one sure get uh, well expecting something very creepy but i think in the end there is nothing creepy you might get shocked in a little bit Let's see now. Oh, we can look under these trees and they are brighter from below. That's interesting. So beautiful, these textures. So beautiful. Well, we have nearly reached the end of it. Here are the lanterns. Well, one of them was previewed. In the save file, I mean. Yeah. And here is uh, the end of this level. We cannot interact with anything, we cannot do anything but walk into this direction. And uh, there will be a loud noise in a second, if we step to the edge. Oh, the beauty, the beauty. A tape again. And then this, ah, oh, it makes me feel some kind of sensation when the game just zooms in in a circle that's so freaking amazing and we can click it and it plays back a video there we are all right so 3 20 1975 blue and sentimental my dreams are blue dreams this is a poem by googling parts of his text you can find it just won't come true dreams blue dreams i find just googling some of the text, you can recognize the entire text. You can find the entire text. What do I mean by entire text? Well, there are some words missing. One word. Blue and sentimental, I can't forget you. We will come to that. I see a Christmas tree, I see a tunnel. My heart won't let you out of my mind. Some text, I'm told, has been changed from the original poem. And then there's some music. It rains all the time since you said goodbye. A lot of darkness. The skies in my eyes, in my heart, all cry. A lot of flashlight play. Just walking around some park in the darkness making a creepy video blue and sentimental if you don't want me 
and a creepy music is setting in. Why do you haunt me? Haunt is our key phrase. Haunt. Oh, beautiful. Now something creepy is happening, but it doesn't really make any sense. And keep me feeling blue and sentimental. And now we just turn the other way from the light. And this looks like a cyberpunk-esque glasses. It rains all the time since you said goodbye. And there's a painting in somebody's hands. Well, the skies and my eyes and my heart all cry. The music is getting intense by now. But it's all irrelevant. It has nothing to do with any game plot. Blue and sentimental if you don't want me. Why do you haunt me and keep me feeling... Maybe we'll see this painting on eBay someday. Blue and sentimental. Yes, sentimental. And we have reached the end. It just gets stuck here and returns to the desktop. So now we have two keys. Haunt, that's number one. And this code we have in the log file. Now here is the log file. And also in this complete save file post, the code was also given to us because it is quite hard to figure that one out. It's quite hard to spawn the log file. So let's try to use these codes. I'm gonna type in haunt. Haunt, haunt. I typed in haunt. And now I can enter a number. I will try two, five, four, six, seven. <coughs> Removed mesh, three, four, five, collision. No other number works. So now we can just press escape. And now we can play the game as per usual. We could also not play it, but let's play it. All right, so what did the mesh remove? It didn't remove anything from the gates or anything. Also, if we try to wait until the gates are open, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna show you. Here we are. The gates open, but no, we can still not walk through here. Also not on the other side, as you can tell here. You can never walk through there, and even if you could, nothing would happen. Instead, what happens is you can now walk through here. Heh, <laughs> you can also get stuck, but just free yourself. And now we are here in this room, the dungeon it is called, the dungeon. There are paintings on the walls, there's text behind you it says here. Well we had that in the game didn't we? There's an eye drawing. There is some code here. One hell of a large hand, quotes from horror movies from the 80s. And it's and and it and it I, it's the name of that company, that fictional company. Walk with a dog, I believe. That's a reference to the I.exe game. It's not forever. This is uh, this might be a quote, but I'm not sure. I think it might be actually some kind of piece of hope for the player. The dog again. And over here we have. Oh, I'm so so sorry. Again, I'm so, so sorry. And we have this machine over here. Now, what to enter here is a big question. And you can actually deduct it from shooting the gun. Shooting the gun reveals a phone number. If you decode it, it results in a Belgian phone number you can call. The phone number is 3246. 8417549. Put a plus in front of it or 00 and you get the number you can call. I explained in the previous video how to decode the code that you hear over the phone, or at least you are supposed to hear. There is a Morse code that you are supposed to hear, but they screwed something up so they published it on Bandcamp instead. The combination of that plus Bandcamp page lets you find out that the code is 191421. And here in the dungeon we enter. 
Yeah, I better reload. Heh. <laughs> 14. And finally, 20. One. Replacement soul required. Please merge with vessel to begin soul transfer. Folder icon. Not arrow. File. Not arrow. Flag. 1914-21. This opened up. Now we can fuse, merge with the vessel, which would be the flag. And that's all we can do here. There's no other exit. I mean, we could Alt F4 out of it. We cannot press escape, by the way. Which is an interesting, nice touch. And now we just have to go in and touch the flag. And that's it. This is the true ending of No Players Online. We are booting into MS Boss again. And look at this. Server list 9 out of 9 online. It was 0 out of 14 or 12 online before. And we have full servers everywhere. Every server is full of people. So I guess we can spectate. All of them are online as well. So let's just ju jump in there and free scan CTF. <laughs> let's join that one and see the end. Here we are, the complete ending of the digital game. The credits, game by Adam Pipe. There is an alternative reality game aspect that you can see in my other videos about this. In particular, the fifth video of my playlist. Sound by Victor Kraus. Additional art by Ward Deheer. The alternative reality stuff is pretty impressive. Assets used. Retro VFX by Killamaki. King No Glitch. PSX Retro. Shader by DSoft20. Special thanks to Modus Interactive. Another indie developer that makes amazing games. For example, Siren Head. John Mallard and Enwit LTD. Fictional. Telnet. Rock Paper Shotgun. Elaine Chen, the Chen family and the Kraus family. Samuel Chris Pipe, Elaine VDB. Elaine? Not sure who these people are. I guess personal support people. And you, us, the player. You, the viewer. Me, the YouTuber. Thanks for hunting. No players online is over. I, I will make another video talking about uh, the deeper meaning of things from the perspective of a developer. Of course, the developer can have a different interpretation than players, so don't worry about that too much. But subscribe if you haven't yet, so you will see that video as well. Check out my other creepy and weird game playlists. If you have subscribed during watching this video, welcome. I will see you next time. Until then, ciao.